Welcome to the BioWhisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of the hypercumulators, a class of plants that is tolerant and able to bioaccumulate heavy metals. The situation as seen from the Google search images on heavy metals from contaminated sources could be triggered as a result of industrialization. One of the key causes is mining, where water, groundwater and soil are contaminated. Our discussion will focus on a perspective overview of hypercumulators. From mining activities, we see heavy metal presence in soils around mining sites after metallic ore extraction. Some illustrated pictures include contaminated water bodies. In fact, the European Union recognized that mining waste is one of the largest waste streams and regulations and awareness have to be enacted and raised to the responsible parties which includes businesses and the industrialized countries. Some of these heavy metals, such as arsenic, cadmium, mercury, lead or selenium, are not essential, since they do not perform any known physiological function in plants. Others, such as cobalt, copper, iron, and zinc, are essential elements required for normal growth and metabolism of plants. The accumulation where internal concentration within the plant rises to superoptimal values leads to poisoning, inactivation of metabolic enzymes, blocking functional groups of metabolically important molecules, and disrupting membrane integrity. Moreover, the enhanced production of reactive oxygen species due to interference with electron transport activities at the chloroplast membrane functions in light capturing process. What are hyperaccumulators? Plants that hyperaccumulate metal and metalloid trace element and these unusual yet useful plants are capable of accumulating up to hundreds or thousands of times greater than is normal for most plants. Being exceptional models for fundamental science to understand metal regulation, these plants build on our understanding, which includes the physiology of metal uptake, transport and sequestration, as well as evolution and adaptation in extreme environments. Over the past decade as well as in the future, Ongoing efforts to hunt for more extremely tolerant excluders in metalliferous soils continues. Hyperaccumulators distinguish themselves from related non-hyperaccumulating taxa with these key hallmarks which include a strongly enhanced rate of heavy metal uptake, a faster route to shoot translocation, and alongside that a greater ability to detoxify and sequester heavy metals and leaves. Most key steps of hyperaccumulation rely on different regulation and expression of genes where examples include the constitutive overexpression of genes encoding transmembrane transporters, such as members of SIP, HMA, MATE, YSL and NTP families. Plants resort to a series of defense mechanisms that control uptake, accumulation and translocation of these dangerous elements and detoxify them by excluding the free ionic forms from the cytoplasm. Hindering the entrance of heavy metals into root cells through entrapment in the apoplastic environment by binding them to exuded organic acids or to anionic groups of cell walls. Restricting the heavy metals that do enter the plant are then kept in root cells where they are detoxified by complexation with amino acids, organic acids or metal binding peptides and or sequestered into vacuoles where it also restricts translocation to the above ground organs thus protecting the leaf tissues, and particularly the metabolically active photosynthetic cells from heavy metal damage. I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates. With that out of the way, Let's continue the discussion. Heavy metal hyperaccumulators do occur on metal-rich soils in both tropical and temperate zones. They are found in vegetations from regions of South Africa, New Caledonia, Latin America as well as of North America and Europe. There is substantial fundamental interest and practical importance where hyperaccumulators serve as exceptional models exploited in applied biotechnologies including phytomining and phytomediatition. Some thoughts are also directed towards possible hyperaccumulation applications in food fortification of essential nutrients and minerals. Elemental Defense Hypothesis 
which states that plants hyperaccumulate heavy metals as a defense mechanism against natural enemies, such as herbivores. Joint effects hypothesis. Heavy metals can operate in concert with organic defensive compounds, leading to enhanced plant defense overall. Hyperaccumulator plants often appear to be restricted in their distribution to metalliferous soils and not in non-metalliferous soils, and they are broadly split into two categories. Obligate hyperaccumulators always exhibit accumulation of some element, whereas the facultative hyperaccumulators do not show unusual accumulation in non-metalliferous soils. Examples of some of the more well-understood species include Terry's vitata with up to 2.3% arsenic, Biscutella laevigata which can accumulate more than 1% thallium, Phytolica americana which can accumulate more than 1%, manganese respectively. Databasing the known species help to provide a depository of information for researchers to tap upon. Hyperaccumulator plants reporting across academic media are widely diffused, including region-based and features-based reporting. Having them centralized into a global database will provide background information for any researcher intending to investigate specific hyperaccumulator species. It is projected that hyperaccumulators alone with new discoveries will number around a thousand species, though we need to make efforts to ensure that hyperaccumulators should also be separately categorized against metal-tolerant plant species. With genetic engineering of potentially useful metal tolerance traits from hyperaccumulators into better and more improved variants and new species, the need for the database to record genetically modified species will definitely be useful. Ideally, such databases should provide access to data from sources that are difficult to locate. It should also give details that may not have been published in the open literature. There is also a constant need to monitor and update nomenclatural changes and to raise awareness of the plight of many hyperaccumulator species that are under threat of extinction. An example of such a database is the Global Hyperaccumulator Database, where information about the taxonomy, distribution, ecology, collection records and analytical data are available. Phytomediatushan and phytomining of heavy metals rich soils by using plants which hyperaccumulate these metals in above ground organs. The harvesting of the aerial part of the plants leads to the disposal of the huge amounts of toxic heavy metals removed from the soil or to the recovery of the valuable metals taken up. At the moment phytoextraction with hyperaccumulators is an option to decontaminate soils with low to moderate metal concentrations but not really for heavily contaminated soils at this moment. Another key application is to enhance selective breeding, or by the transfer of metal hyperaccumulation genes to high biomass species since most hyperaccumulators are small plants. A larger biomass would improve the phytomediatushan capabilities. Bioengineered plants tolerant to the presence of toxic levels of metals with higher efficiency can be envisioned in the future. Phytomining, which is a subset of phytomediatushan can be extended to recover marketable amounts of metals from plant biomass or mineralized soil for revenue. Commercialization of phytomining using high biomass hyperaccumulator plants depends essentially on the metal concentration of the plant, its annual biomass production and the world price of the target metal. Embedding genetic resources to develop Engineered plants with enhanced nutritional value for improving public health, fortified foods, including Mineral deficiencies I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and Subscribe for future updates